One small step for man, one giant step for private companies trying to land on the moon. At least that's what I guess we would be saying if they succeeded. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing the recent announcement from a Japanese private company, the company known as iSpace, that has recently tried to land on the moon using their lander known as Hakuto-R, the lander you see right here. With this particular mission also recently taken this incredibly gorgeous picture of our own planet rising in front of the moon. But unfortunately, something went wrong and the mission most likely crashed. It looks like the preliminary investigation suggests that there might have actually not been enough fuel or possibly some kind of a leak. But had this mission been successful, it would have been the first official private mission by anyone to land on the moon. Or I guess the first startup to officially make it here. Here's actually a map of previous missions that were successful, and as you can see, pretty much everything here is just by three different countries. The US and USSR, both of which basically stopped back in the 1970s, and the Chinese Changi program that began just over a decade ago and so far has been really successful. But just over a decade ago, Google proposed a kind of a competition. It was known as the Google Lunar X Prize, and it was basically a competition to try to land on the moon, but by trying to do so through private means. Or basically they tried to create a kind of a startup environment for potential future lunar landings. But nobody won this competition and it kind of never happened. Although the companies that did start, they actually still kept going and are still trying to land even today. And so in this video I wanted to briefly discuss some of these missions and also some of the previous attempts, along with future attempts that are going to be happening this year, with many actually happening in 2023. As a matter of fact, it looks like 2023 might be the year when some of the private companies might finally succeed. There's a really high chance right now that somebody is going to finally make it. But here I wanted to start with a bit of a history. Because for the most part, the moon today is seen as a kind of a stepping stone. A stepping stone to future space technology and major advances in science. Now following the Apollo missions and the USSR's Luna missions, which mostly ended in the late 70s, there wasn't really a lot of interest in the moon until the 90s. And in the 90s, it all started with Japan trying to propel their space technology with the agency now known as JAXA to a completely new level. They actually were pretty successful with several probes orbiting the moon and several probes crash landing on the moon as well. And with JAXA being successful, in 2003, European Space Agency had their own lunar impactor as well. So basically here, the moon served as a kind of a rite of passage. But following Japanese success, we also had China and India join in as well. The Chinese had their very successful Chang'e mission that lasted for just over a decade, culminating in the return of various samples. And India had Chandrayaan program with a very successful orbiter that actually created some really interesting maps, followed by a not so successful lander that crashed just over a year ago. It would have actually made India yet another country to successfully land on the surface of the moon, but unfortunately they failed. But all of these so far have been basically government organizations with all of the effort coming from, well, taxpayers' money. But we did have some of the first startups basically trying to get to the moon using private funds. And one of the first ones is somewhat surprising. I mean, take a guess what country it was. When I found out about this a few years ago, I was really surprised myself. It's Luxembourg. Yep, that Luxembourg. The tiny European country that became the eighth country to reach the moon with an impactor by a company known as Lux Space. A company that also became a part of a larger conglomerate from Germany, whose main purpose is basically space technologies. And so back in 2014, they hitched a ride on top of the Changi mission and conducted the first ever private lunar flyby. But because this wasn't a landing or even a crash landing, they didn't become one of the countries on the surface. And so until 2019, there were really no other countries on the surface here. But in 2019, we had the first potential lunar lander, the one that almost succeeded. This was by an Israeli space ill company that attempted to land their Bereshit 1 lander, which was initially one of the contestants in the previously mentioned Google competition. But unfortunately, it crashed on the surface. They're actually going to be trying this again in 2024 with Bereshit 2, but basically at the moment, Israeli became the first private company to attempt such a landing and the first to almost make it. They actually delivered some really interesting scientific instruments to the surface, which you can find out more about in one of the videos in the description. And this was the beginning of several different attempts by different private organizations to try to be the first. Although as you might have learned from that Indian mission we've discussed previously, landing on the moon is really not that easy. Because within just a few months from the Israeli mission, even the Indian lander that was a lot more technically advanced crashed as well. 
meaning that even now only three countries successfully soft landed on the surface of the moon. India was supposed to become the fourth, but they never made it. Then last year, in 2022, South Korea has also become the new entry in the lunar exploration. This is the mission known as Danuri, with the Korean Pathfinder Lunar Orbiter now basically being in orbit around the moon, conducting extremely accurate observations of the surface and actually looking for several different elements, including things like helium-3, uranium, silicon, water ice, and potentially some other stuff that could be one day mined on the surface. Because it's using much more advanced cameras, there's a high chance that in the next few years it's going to produce one of the most accurate maps of the surface of this particular object, which could be used for future landings as well. Now, Korea hasn't announced its lander yet, but chances are they might because they secretly are going through a kind of a space race with Japan. And it just so happens that Japan has announced quite a lot of landers and a lot of missions going to the moon. But the Hakuto-R Mission 1 was supposed to be the first, the first Japanese lander and the first private mission to ever succeed. This is what the lander looks like, with a tiny rover that you can kind of see next to it. And this lander was launched on top of the Falcon 9 rocket back in December of 2022. Intriguingly, it was also carrying this, the Emirates Lunar Mission, which would have technically made United Arab Emirates the fifth country to succeed with a successful lunar landing. The rover was named Rashid. But as we now know, the mission was a failure, so pretty much everything on board of the lander crashed on the surface. Nevertheless, despite the failure, UAE still became the ninth country to reach the surface of the moon, even though it wasn't really in the way they intended to reach it. But what's intriguing is that even this lander is technically part of that Google competition legacy. This also was initially the Google Lunar X Prize contender that just never succeeded back in 2010. Here's what their first rover was supposed to look like back in 2014. Intriguingly, just to raise money for this mission, they actually ended up going public on Tokyo Stock Exchange with their shares increasing by 65% in just two weeks. This was back in 2022. And just for funsies, if we take a look at their stock now, not doing so hot anymore. It basically lost nearly 30% in just a few hours. Also, just a fun tidbit, this particular lander had something else really Japanese inside of it. A transformer. Or I guess a transformable lunar robot. But I mean, no matter what you refer to it as, it was a transformer. And what's even crazier is that it was produced by JAXA, the Japanese space agency, and Tommy Company, literally responsible for the Transformer toy line. It's a toy company that's pretty famous in Asia, and you can generally find it in most toy stores in North America as well. So secretly, I wanted this mission to succeed just to see this work on the moon. Eh, maybe next time. But despite of this failure now, we still might have one more mission succeed in the next few months. And here we're talking about a Japanese mission. This might be the first Japanese rover on the surface of the moon, assuming everything goes right. The Yaoki rover, if successful, would become the lightest rover ever produced at just under half a kilo. But it would be part of another mission, another startup, that's going to be launching in June of 2023. And this is actually where things get really exciting and where we finally might kind of cross this line, where a lot of different private startups might finally have a chance to land on the moon. Basically kickstarting a new era. Here we're talking about Astrobotic Technology, a private American startup that's going to be launching what's known as Mission 1 with their Peregrine lander that you see right here that's possibly going to hold up to 25 different payloads from countries like Chile, Mexico, Hungary, Japan, USA, and UK. With I guess the irony in this picture being that it also has the DHL delivery company as one of the sponsors. And the actual list of suppliers for this mission is pretty large. As a matter of fact, I was sort of surprised to find out that even the famous Mr. Beast is on the list. I don't exactly know what Jimmy is going to be sending here just yet, and I hope I didn't actually spoil the video for him, but it looks like he is sending something and might become the first YouTuber to ever send anything to the moon. But I'm personally more interested in actual rovers and actual landers. And there seem to be six at the moment, from six different countries. Now I'm sure we'll know more once the mission comes a little bit closer to the launch date, but in theory this could be a monumental breakthrough, both for lunar landers and for actual private missions potentially landing on the moon. And in case you're wondering what they're going to use to launch, well, it's this. Vulcan Centaur that's going to have its maiden flight in June of 2023. In other words, the maiden flight is going to be delivering all of this as a kind of a test for future lunar missions. This rocket is made by the ULA. It's trying to create a rocket to replace Atlas V and Delta IV rockets, and also a rocket that's going to be able to deliver things to the moon. And so in theory, if this lander is successful, 
we might actually see a completely new era for private exploration. Because this would be the beginning of what NASA refers to as commercial lunar payload services. A program that's going to deliver various science and technology payloads as part of the Artemis program for the next few years. And all of these three lenders, by various private US companies, are going to attempt their landings really soon, within the next few months. And here NASA is obviously trying to open the door for private companies interested in landing on the moon for one reason or another. The next mission, Nova C that you see right here, is possibly planned for June of 2023 as well, or just a few weeks afterwards. With this program opening the door for private companies wanting to join in on the Artemis mission and sort of pushing the technologies to a completely next level. And since several missions are already planned, this is definitely something that a lot of companies are kind of interested in. And one of these lenders might be from Canada, although it's still not clear if it's actually going to happen. The Doge One, that sort of started as a joke from various Doge supporters, that crypto coin, that actually did make enough money to make a CubeSat, but I don't think I've heard a lot about the actual progress. Previously though, it was supposed to be part of the same mission as the Nova C. And so if everything goes right, we might actually suddenly have a new explosion of lunar exploration, with quite a lot of countries making it to the surface for the first time with the lander you see right here. There's even something called cube rovers that someone came up with recently that are supposed to be these miniature rovers very similar to CubeSats. And that's the one I was kind of interested in, just to see how well it works. And so anyway, until the mission launches and until the initial tests are conducted, we're not going to know much else. For now, it's all kind of just theoretical and hypothetical, and for all we know, they might experience the same fate as every other private mission to date. Although chances are that the American company supported by NASA might have a slightly higher chance of succeeding. We'll see how it goes, and I'll definitely follow this up with the next video in the next few months. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.